Boy, do I have a treat for you guys today. This is Dr. Joseph Anton. He is the CEO and chairman of the board of El Nutra. So this is the company that puts out Prolon. If you're unfamiliar, that is Dr. Walter Longo's um, fasting mimicking diet. I've seen this thing all over the celebrity world. I, I saw Gwyneth Paltrow on Goop Lab on uh, Net, Netflix um, actually doing the Prolon diet and achieving some amazing changes in her biomarkers from it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Dr. Longo, he is the um, director of the Longevity Institute at USC. So um, what Dr. Anton is talking about in this interview is kind of how that all happened, how this all came to be. And like, honestly, the amazing team of highly educated medical professionals that have come together to say, hey, like, how can we intervene in a more proactive health approach? Like how, you know, we're, we're tired of sick care. We're tired of everybody just coming to doctors and hospitals when they're sick, but like, how do we get them to start actually making those changes? And Dr. Anton was a huge part of that. And so it's so cool to hear him tell this story. We're also going into a lot of the benefits of fasting and why Prolon is designed the way it is where you get like this box and it has certain foods in it that you eat at certain times. So really cool to hear all of that from him. Um, just to give you a little background on him, <laughs> you'll hear me like in the episode, just being like, Holy cow, you have been on such a journey. This is so cool. But, um, he, um, I mean, he has quite the list. I won't go through all of it, but he did get, um, his studies in public policy at Harvard and also public health at Johns Hopkins, um, and his doctor and master's in medical and biological sciences at St. Joseph university. So, I mean, he's super educated and I'll, I'll, I'll save the rest for the interview, but it's just so cool to hear, um, just how much science, just how much research has gone behind the fasting mimicking diet. It was honestly a paradigm shifter for me on a lot of things. You'll here, we start talking about, um, some of his thoughts about like keto versus the way they're doing it. And some of the science that's behind that, that was really eye opening for me. So I think you guys are going to love this episode. Here is Dr. Joseph Anton. Before we jump into the show, I am extremely honored to share with you the sponsor of this podcast, and that is Rep Provisions. And I want to tell you a little bit about who they are, what they're about. They are a regenerative agriculture company. They are a ranch. I have been to the ranch myself. Incredible. And if you aren't familiar with regenerative agriculture, it is my extreme honor to introduce you. So here's a few statistics of why regenerative agriculture is important before I get into what it is. First of all, the United States is losing topsoil 10 times faster then it's replenishing it right now. And this comes from our modern conventional agriculture practices that we've really just developed in the last several decades. The way we are raising cattle and the way we are growing these monocrops of plants is depleting our topsoil at astronomical rates. And I love the way Eric Perner, the founder uh, and owner of Rep Provisions, the rancher there at the ranch, I love how he puts this. He says that our planet is just a giant rock spinning in space with a tiny layer of topsoil and subsoil that supports all life on the planet. Every economy, every nation is sustained by this layer of topsoil. It's really important, right? We don't have any soil or quality soil. Health goes down and then eventually life goes away, right? So it's, it's so important. Um, right now, we're losing about 75 billion tons of topsoil every year because as it erodes from these conventional farming practices, it goes into the waterways and then goes into the ocean and we lose it. So it's not sustainable, obviously, and we have to regenerate the topsoil. And this is where regenerative agriculture comes in. And the way they raise their animals is supportive of regeneration of the topsoil. So you can listen to my podcast episode with Eric Perner if you want to learn more about exactly how they do it. It's so important. Now, from a health perspective, this is so cool. Um, Eric just shared with me that they had their meat lab tested at Michigan State University. And if you're not familiar with omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, let me share this with you real quick. So omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. They're in all foods. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So this is all foods have a certain ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now, the ideal is one-to-one, -one, right? So we balance out that pro-inflammatory aspect of food, which is important. It triggers a lot of things in our body, but we balance it with the anti-inflammatory effect. On average, Americans are 10-to-one 
their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 10 to 1 because honestly, we eat so much canola oil and so many processed foods and all the way up to 30 to 1 and higher. It's super inflammatory, causes heart disease, cancer, all disease. Um, Grain-fed meat is on average 5 to 1 ratio or worse. And what came back from Michigan State University is that Rep Provisions meat has a one to one omega six to omega three ratio, which is freaking huge. Um, so, so cool. I'm so glad they found that out. And by the way, just FYI, grain fed chicken has a 15 to one ratio, and seed oils are the worst, like canola, um, soybean, all these industrial seed oils, 70 to one or worse. And they estimate that 25% of the calories in the American diet come from canola oil. No wonder there's so much disease. No wonder everyone's so unhealthy. So just wanted to share that with you guys. This is not only an amazing way to support the planet, but also your own health. Um, and they're giving you guys an awesome discount. It's one of the highest discounts they offer 15% off anything with code coach Tara. So I'll link that in the show notes, or you can go to repprovisions.com anytime and just use the coupon code coach Tara and get 15% off. All right. So Dr. Anton, I'm so excited. I get to hear this like straight from the horse's mouth. I think hopefully most of my audience is familiar with, um, prolon and, um, fasting mimicking diet. And I have so many questions for you. So thank you for taking the time to come and educate us today on what you guys are doing behind the scenes and a little more in depth on fasting mimicking. Yeah, for sure. My pleasure. And it seems you have, uh, the right crowd that's already inspired and 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 following a lot of the fasting and and the keto trends. So I look forward to answering lots of questions that come to mind and clarifying a few notions uh, under fasting and fasting mimicking for you guys today. Yeah, thanks so much. I'll try to represent my my people as best I can with all the questions they might have. <laughs> but before we get into like the science side of things, I was wondering if you could share your journey and how you got here. Um, I mean, you have a very impressive ed- education history. You know, it's clear that you're passionate about how do we help human health. But could you share a little bit of how you got to where you're at now? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I started uh, as a physician. I wanted to help patients and and wanted always to be a cardiologist. And uh, while doing my rotations, I just figured out that I'm being trained to give a pill, subscribe everyone for a daily pill that was never resolving their issues. So if you have a blood pressure, you're gonna be on that pill for basically the rest of your life and actually gonna be on more pills after. It's not like you're gonna stay on that. Same thing for cholesterol, it was a statin every day for blood pressure, for glucose, it was a metformin, and then you add more, and then you add more, and then, and then you go to insulin. So it was like, this is, it's smart to subscribe people forever from a, from a pharma perspective, but it's not smart at all from a health and, and human health span perspective, saying healthy long, um, you know, we were practicing sick care at best rather than healthcare. And so I decided to go and change the healthcare system because the incentive built in health policy is to pay when we're sick. So the doctor is happy when you visit them, they, they, they get paid, the hospitals are happy, and the system is built for us to be sick. And I thought that if we change health policy into more prevention and, and, um, and, um, and it's staying healthy and embracing lifestyle medicine, that would, that would be the right thing to do for our health, but also for the financial crisis that we have in the healthcare system. And then this is what I did. You know, I did my studies at Harvard and Hopkins and in health policy and public health. And I was so excited to go and change healthcare systems globally. And, and when was this, by the way? When did you study there? 20, 20, 2007, sorry, 2007. Okay. Is when I did my, uh, finished from Harvard and then, uh, and then I enrolled in Hopkins in 2008. Okay, okay. And then, uh, and then I, um, I started consulting as well with a lot of ministries of health around the world, trying to work with the ministers themselves. Uh, we call them in the U.S. the secretaries and, and, and trying to move the system to prevention, which, which is a concept they understand and they actually they, put, they want to push for. But there was no market for prevention. You know, we as humans are used to consume products or and for investors to come, they want to see products. They want to, and, and, and prevention was a set of recommendation, eat healthy, but either you eat healthy or not, exercise, either you exercise or not, stop smoking, either you do it or not. They mm-hmm. felt they couldn't, they couldn't invest into a clear market, a clear you know, product or technology-based market. And they felt they also couldn't gain on the short term the benefits of that. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I started my next journey in life looking at, is there a product 
or a technology or a platform that can claim prevention, that can keep us healthy long. And, um, and um, some of my professors at Harvard said, you gotta go and work in a biotech company first in order to learn how to bring a new technology in healthcare to the market because you know, there wasn't a clear product saying, hey, I can help you live right. five right years. Or and if you wanna bring that technology, you have to learn how to launch products in healthcare. So I ended up joining uh, a biotech company called Lily. And I learned with them all the way from research to commercialization, to globalization, to pricing, to marketing and all of that. Wow. Um, it was it was a fantastic ride, and I got to be in like over forty countries and and, and, wow. and plus systems. Um, and then I I left to pursue my my ambition of finding uh, a technology, a product, whatever that is that represents lifestyle medicine, and that investors and governments and can pay for and doctors can prescribe. And there was a big aha moment in my life. Uh, I met this gentleman, the CEO of the Buck Institute for Research on Aging. It's an institution in San Francisco. It's a nonprofit, and they do. They have over 260 PhDs and scientists just doing aging studies. And I was like, "Why aging? What, what's what is you know?" And and that gentleman said something that actually shook my life. As and he was, you you guys. He, and what he meant was doctors and policy experts and healthcare experts. He said, "You get it all wrong. You think diabetes is different than cancer." And cancer is different than Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's is different than cardiovascular disease. I'm like, what do you mean? They're all different. One is in the brain, one is in the heart. And one... he was like, yeah, but it's like saying, they, 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 he said, if they were different or independent, why you don't get your first heart attack at age 20? Why you don't get your Alzheimer's, even if you have the APOE gene, why you don't get Alzheimer's at age 24? Why you don't get your first, most of the cancers at age 23? They all happen at a later stage in life. And they're age-related conditions because when the body is old, all the cells are old, and especially if you age in an unhealthy way. And if if the first incident happens in the brain, you call it Alzheimer's or dementia, but it's not that there's an issue with the brain, it's just it's old and that's the first symptom. And the best example is like when you drive your car for 800,000 miles and if now there's an issue in the window, it's not like the window has a you know, a manufacturing issue, right? It's just, it's been used so many times and, yeah. and it was the first incident. And even if you fix the window, you're gonna, the engine's gonna have an incident soon. So for him, he was, even if you cure somebody from cancer, and the studies show that you can cure cancer, eradicate cancer. You will only like gain two to three years max before the next big disease happened because the same unhealthy aging or the same aging of the cell that Turn out right. to express any cancer is going to lead to your diabetes or your Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. so, so basically what he taught me is that if you want to really push all these chronic diseases, you know, away from, away from an early onset, you got to practice anti-aging and you got to or slow down the aging of the body. And, and, and his goal is we should find a technology to create a delta between your true age, chronological age, and your biological age. So if you're 55, but from the inside you're 45, you just gain 10 years before your cancer, you know, comes around or Alzheimer's or whatever. And in prevention should work exactly on biological age. And that was a big aha moment for me. And then I started looking around the world for aging researchers and longevity experts. And many of these experts were saying, uh, there's this wonderful professor at the University of Southern California. His name is Walter Longo. Maybe you have heard about him and many others. And he has the Longevity Institute at USC. And so he's, he's been studying aging for a good 30 years. And he was looking at nutrition to manipulate the body in a positive way to keep the body you know, younger. And, and looking for what can keep the body younger. This is how we come across fasting, showing that fasting... It wasn't a calorie game. It wasn't that, oh, you eat less, you lose the weight. The fasting is why prolon is five days. We, we're more of a longer fast believers. Um, we'll talk about intermittent or not, but he learned that if you, if you stress the body with fasting for a few days, then the cells rejuvenate to survive. And once you rejuvenate a cell, this is what ended up getting the Nobel Prize in medicine in 2016, the autophagy. And when you rejuvenate a cell, you're just getting that cell a little bit younger or you're slowing down the aging of that cell. And therefore the risk for that cell to become a cancer cell or a diabetic cell or an Alzheimer cell is a little bit lower, at least for the time being. And therefore he buys us a few years of health span 
which is a big word now uh, for all of us. We don't want to live long and sick. We want to live long and healthy. And yeah. part of gaining health span is keeping the cells younger. And fasting was a big factor actually to push the cell to fix themselves and stay a little bit younger. And this is how we came about this concept of fasting. And, um, and fasting for a few days obviously is so difficult for people to do. Um, but the National Institute of Health saw the positive data he had in mice and they sponsored him. They gave him big grants each, I think, in tens of millions of dollars to develop the fasting mimicking diet. Can you help people embrace the lifestyle of fasting without starving? Can we move fasting from starvation to nourishment? And this is how the fasting mimicking diet was born. And, and we can talk more about it. I'm, I'm like, it, it has been a long answer already, but tying yeah, off. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is so, a perfect segue. It's so exciting because, you know, um, I, I'm, I intermittent fast probably most days. I'm not like a diehard about it, but it's just kind of my flow mm -hmm. now. It's, you know, almost 1 p.m. I haven't eaten yet today. It's kind yeah. of normal for me. And I've done, I've done a three day fast before I have not because, um, prolon is five days, correct. A five day fast. So I would love to get into yeah. a few different things. Um, one, why, why five days, you know, what, what, where can you explain the benefit of going five versus one or two, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and the best, way to explain this, I always use, I, I love storytelling and, and anecdotes and, and I use, the body under fasting is like, a, is like a, a CEO or a company with no financing, right? So, so say you're the head of, you know, Tara is the head of a company and Tara needs a million dollar per month to operate, right? So if, if and, and you have 10 million in the bank as reserves, right? So it's the same body and fat. And if I come to Tara and say, hey Tara, I actually, you have, less money today, you're not gonna have enough revenues, your bank account drop. And this is how intermittent fasting works, right? You, you kind of skip your mm -hmm. little bit of the food and then little by little actually right. you start shedding out the fat and, 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 and get more lean and, and, and healthy. Yep. And most diets are like that. They're mm -hmm. more chronic. They give you like a lower calorie per day. And or if you mm -hmm. exercise, you create that gap and your bank account drops. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to stress enough. You need a million, and if you get 950,000, you're not going to stress enough to change, you know. Now, if I come and I say, you know what, Tara, you need a million. Sorry, you have zero dollars. Zero. That's fasting, right? You're going to be, oh, my God. Yes, I'm going to drop super fast in the bank account, which is good. You lose the fat faster. You, the, the longer you go, you lose your fat faster. So, right, that's yeah. a positive thing. But what's most important is you'll feel as a CEO having zero dollars and needing a million, you'll feel a big crisis. And you go and you, you fix the company, you start restructuring. You say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a reorg, I'm doing a restructure, I'm changing some functions. By the way, we're used to overpay there, let me renegotiate that deal. We used to invest a lot on things that are not bringing good value, we'll stop that. So you're gonna go and try to fix whatever you can fix that wasn't working well in the company. And that's the best way to explain why fasting works different than any other diet. You know, we took fasting from almost not existing to in, in, in outside of religion in four to five years to now the number one diet in America. Mm -hmm. And what oh, obviously the fast weight loss, which you can see right away, is important, but that rejuvenation in, in restructuring is actually the most felt. Now, so this is why you go more than one day, meaning if you do one or two days, the this, this stress is not enough or long enough for the body to say, let me engage the cells. So the main difference, one word to leave the audience with, you do intermittent fasting, it's great for, for weight and weight has a lot of great benefits coming with it, right? The, the pressure, the blood pressure, the inflammation, all of that. But also if you want to rejuvenate your cells, you can do it two to three times a year. So you can continue to intermittent fast, but two to three times a year, um, it's like a, a Formula One racing car that does two pit stops to change, right? To change the oil, to change yeah. the and, and so you want to do that a couple of times a year, two to three times to rejuvenate your cells. Now, why five days? If you go shorter, you don't get into deep rejuvenation. And if you go longer, you're bankrupt, right? So that CEO that, has, that needs a million dollars, you leave him three months with no, uh, or five months with no money, the company goes bankrupt. You want to stress enough and then you want to refinance a lean, mean, like, you know, great uh, uh, company or great buddy post-fast. So that's critical. It was the five days were a balance between 
inducing the benefits without going into the side effects. I love that. Thank you. I love analogy. So I'm just like, yay. <laughs> I can tell you do too. It's super helpful. I love that with the, the bank account analogy. It's, it's yeah. um, the, the crisis, right? Yeah. And we've, you know, people hear, wait, is fasting good for me or bad for me? I heard it's a stressor. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. but like, yeah. so is lifting weights and, yeah. you know, a lot of other stressors are really good for you. Yeah. The, the, the other question he asked me was, was also the food, like, right? So, so yeah. back to that, why, why we do five days with food? Yeah. And- decided to, although, you know, for 23 years, we've been researching water fast. And yeah. Walter Fugel at, at USC, I mean, he was, he was a water faster. We come from water fasting and we switch to food with fasting because let's go back and explain it with the same analogy. If you have that CEO who needs a million dollars and you give him zero, I mean, he's going to fix, but he's going to feel a lot of pain. There's employees are going to leave because he's not going to pay them. There's a damage in sales next month because you cannot order supplies. So even fixing needs some finance. And what we do is, is instead of giving you zero dollars, you need a million. We give you four or five hundred thousand dollars, and we earmark those as well. So this is the ingenuity of the fasting mimicking diet. We actually give you a good, it's it's eight hundred to one thousand one hundred calories. So you're getting half of what you need. So we're giving you that half a million dollar. But actually, there's a lot of secrets in the formulation that we go also around the sensors of the cell. So we, we create the bigger stress than the 500K stress because we earmark the food into special um, pathways. So, so in the case of that CEO and that company, we give that CEO $500,000 out of the million he needs or she needs. And then we earmark those to say HR and supply, which are healthy for you to survive next month. And, and we keep the stress on the essentials, things that need to be fixed. Could you, sh- could you share some of the intention behind some of, you know, the food choices and timing and why those particular yeah. foods were chosen? Yeah, the, the fasting mimicking diet is 77 ingredients, by the way. It's, it's one of the most complicated food that is out there. It now has been studied for, what, over 12, 14 years. There are actually 23 universities doing the trials with us. Um, and we've got now, we filed over 371 patents on it. It's, it's, it's a big complicated wow. formulation. And what we do to answer your question in a, in a simple way is, is, you know, your body in the morning where you have different levels of cortisol and insulin sensitivity and where your brain needs to function. This is where we a little bit go back with intermittent fasting and we'll talk about that, but your brain is functioning the most in the morning when you wake up to go to work, your body's starting to move. And, and so you have different hormonal, uh, 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 in homeostatic, if you want, uh, in, in your blood in the morning, you have different needs. And so what we feed you in the morning is studied based on that, as well as combining different elements for what level of absorption, what level of circulation, what level of glycemic index and all of that. The night is different. The day is different. Awesome. And how, much, how much macros, what, actually we study sequences of amino acids. We don't just look at protein levels, but which protein, what's the source, what's wow. sequence. Because the response of the body, the IGF response to protein, the insulin response to certain carb, we actually studied all of that to be able to give you food up to that 800 to 1,100 and still keep you in a fasting mode. So we study even mm-hmm. what the hormones that are secreted after you eat and to keep those down so that the body does not recognize that. And when the food gets to the cell, we, we have our own, you know, uh, study showing how to get it to the cell, which pace, which time of the day, so that the cell still is not satisfied and feels the fast. Wow. Super cool. I'm curious, uh, are you also fans of water fasting still? Is that still part of your practice that you also do on top of doing fasting mimicking diet? Yeah. So we, we are fans of water fast in, in, in a time restricted eating matter. So within, within a day, if you want to go 12 to 14 hours without food, uh, we're definitely, you know, uh, proponents of that. And why so? Because I don't know if, you, if you've seen the, the longevity diet book by our founder, Walter Longo, but he talks, it, one of the pillars of, if you want science that led to the creation of, of, of the mm-hmm. food is he studied the centenarians. He goes to people who lived hundred years and beyond traveled nice. to meet with them. And a lot of them were respecting that. A lot of them did not snack at night. They did not eat late at night. So they would eat and you can, and you can 
you can see that from, from human evolution, right? We never had electricity all the time or refrigeration yeah. or the families used to sit and eat at 6, 7 p.m. And then they would sleep and that's it. And then 12 hours after they wake up, they eat some of the leftovers or they go and find new food, etc. So that's that's the 12 hour. And, and, and by the way, we talk a lot about the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2016 with autophagy is less attention to the 2017. The next year, Nobel Prize was on but uh, on the circadian rhythm and, and, mm. and time restricted eating comes yeah. from that actually. So yeah. we sleep, when we sleep, we're not just, the, just resting the brain, we're resting every other organ in the body, including the GI tract system and they need to recharge and rejuvenate as well. So we're all, we're very much proponents of the 12 to 14 hours. We, we, call, we call it fasting, it's, it's not fasting, it's we're overeating today, we used to, we used to eat, Humanity used to eat 12 hours throughout the day naturally. Right. We started right. eating more frequently and now we call it intermittent fasting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I First of all, I have to say, I love, um, I was hearing, I was listening to you on another interview before this interview. And I heard you say that after your friend had asked you that question, or, or the, the man that you had met that, you know, related all these diseases yeah. to yeah. aging, that you yeah. literally went to all these different research institutions yeah. to see what they were up to in yeah. terms of longevity. And I love hearing this about Walter Longo, that he's went to go, learn from centenarians and see what they were doing. And I love this, uh, this passion for like, you know, so often I think a lot of us are like, well, let me read a book or let me listen to podcasts and like, no, we're going to actually go there and check it out and learn firsthand. And I, I just, I admire that. It's so cool. Um, and also I was just thinking like, in terms of this, uh, like water fasting in this window, I was that one thing that I've been really interested in is also dry fasting. And I was curious if you have opinions on dry fasting as well. Yeah. And, and you know, dry fasting is no water as well. Right. And, right. And, and, right. And we don't see any of the benefits. Of, okay. It's, it, it comes from certain, uh, conservative religious base. Right. Fully. I mean, actually I have, a, I have a saying, I say, if, if, Prayers were the healing of the soul. Fasting was the healing of the body. Yeah. And, and fasting exists and is the common, actually is the most common word of all the divine religions. Uh, it's fasting because Buddhism, uh, uh, mm. Christianity, uh, yeah. Islam, and, Judo, and Judaism, they all have yep. fasting in common. Yep. And I think it's the healing of the, of the body as well as, as prayers and meditation, uh, you know, is the healing of the, uh, so, so, Love but, that don't see the reason for water fast. Again, it's going back to you want that CEO on that company, you want to really close every pipe and, and just dry and bankrupt that body. I don't think I don't think that would be healthy. There's we have never in science seen a benefit to dry, dry fast okay. for water fast. There's no there's no randomized clinical trial showing any benefit of, okay. of water of a dry fast over water fast. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I, I also wanted to hit on this circadian rhythm thing. I was, uh, I was, I've been looking into this a lot lately and I'm not sure if this is the study that led to the Nobel prize or if it was something else, but I was reading a study about how they had time restricted. It was either rats or mice. I can't remember which one, but in that they gave them, you know, isocaloric, just the same amount of calories, yeah. but you know, some could eat whenever and some didn't. And at the end of it, I think like all of the ones who were time restricted were healthy yeah. and uh, do, yes. I'm sure, you know, what I'm talking about. Can you share? Sachin Panda and, and, and yes. now yeah. is going to publish another one also with the fasting mimicking diet versus versus uh, as, as, a, as a fasting intervention versus eat at any time. So yeah, that, that was Sachin nice. who's, who's probably one of, in, 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 from the science and research world, one of the fathers of time-restricted eating. And, and you're right, is it's, this is why when we speak fasting, we, we, not, we don't only talk about calories, we talk about timing. Yeah. Right? And stress. Fasting is timing and stress and then calories. So what you were saying is if if you eat say 2000 calories over six meals throughout the day versus you eat all these 2000 over just 12 hours or 10 hours. The more when you restrict they're showing that the body because the body gets into a rhythm, right? And in the rhythm every time you eat you get a spike in if you're eating carbs and proteins you get a spike in insulin and insulin like growth factor the IGF response to protein. So these are growth hormones. These are anabolic pro, is why if you want to grow muscle, you want to eat multiple times. But if you want to live healthy long, you don't want to do that because then you're just pushing your body to grow, which is aging. 
Um, and that's the biggest dilemma, by the way, for, for folks with, um, who wants to, to look lean and buff. It's the big dilemma when, when you go on a lot of protein, eat multiple times a day. And this is why you see people like Ronnie Coleman and others leaving us sooner than later at age 50 and 60 and, and Andre the Giant and all these big, big, uh, you know, either they're big because they have growth hormone naturally like the giants with acromegaly or because they were injecting growth hormone and eating high protein multiple times. The more you push the body to eat frequently, the more it's growing and grow, we grow biologically towards our end. We don't grow anywhere else. Um, and so this is why from a pure longevity perspective, when you leave a window of no food, you're helping the body to compensate and not always be an anabolic, you know, right. suck as much food as you can and store it in fat or in growth. You actually go into a balanced way like the bank account, you go, you put the money and you spend what you put, then your bank account starts to stay stable versus putting more and more and then spending less. And, and, and you're right, time-restricted eating has shown that it's the body deals better. It takes over that three meals over 12 hours what it needs rather than keep stocking up and keeps getting this growth hormone-like or insulin-like or insulin-like growth factor uh, to push the body to store and, and grow and age faster. Yeah. And it really, I feel like it really changes your, when you understand these things, it changes your mentality towards feeling hungry. At least that's what I found, you know, um, when I'm traveling or out and about and I'm like, I can tell I'm getting hungry. And I, I, I um, I think I have an enhanced benefit to be able to withstand that, uh, yeah. emotionally because I have done a lot of fasting and keto and all of these things. So I'm used to being that state, but it's like, it's almost like I look forward to it because I know that it's, it's, I feel like I'm entering heal mode for my body. And I think, you know, this is something that we live in a, a world where diabetes is at epidemic rates, obesity is at epidemic rates. And truly I used to be a lot, a lot heavier. And in that time I would almost be like, um, panicked if I felt the least little bit hungry, like that was not okay. I need a granola bar or trail mix or like, I need something now I'm hungry, you know? And so, um, I'm grateful for all of this research that you guys are pulling out because it's really, it, it, it changes your mentality when you're like, yay, my body can heal, you know? Um, people don't want to go to bed a little bit hungry. Like I, you hear that all the time, like, oh, I can't sleep hungry. And I'm like, I, I'm trying to create my life so that I'm just a little bit hungry before yeah. I go to bed, because then I know my body can heal itself. Um, could you speak uh, at, to the, the healing and the, the impact that letting ourselves go into this, you know, AMPK into this healing state, well, how that impacts our gut health? Well, um, your question has a lot of different, even about being hungry, because yeah. if you're overweight and hungry, that's that's like a, like that's hormonal driven versus if you're very skinny and hungry, which is the true need for food. Right, right. Each one would derive into into a different uh, into a different behavior. But they, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. Speaking about gut health, a lot of fasting studies of gut health, um, and in different gut health directions, whether it's impact on the microbiome whether it's impact on leaky gut, which I think is one of the least talked about, but maybe most one of the most impactful yeah. things to uncover about medicine, a lot of, and, and just to define leaky gut for your for your listeners, you know, some the, the, the cells in the gut, they separate everything we eat, whether good or bad from, from, from getting inside of the body, right? And, and, and we can digest only a few things and then the rest goes as, as um, uh, you know, out of our, out of our body. Um, in, in, because of the processed food we eat, because of the over grilling we do and, and a lot of things we, we take and the toxins, there, there are micro breaches now happening in the gut. And so it leaks when you say leaky gut, I mean, the gut every day leaks what we should absorb, but now it's leaking things that we should not absorb. And there are a lot of theories showing that that if those toxins are crossing the brain, they might be in favor of, of Alzheimer's if they're crossing, they're cross matching with the thyroid. You know, we have a big epidemic of Hashimoto and autoimmune reactions against the yeah. thyroid and, and they're increasing with time. And they're like, you know, when we went to med school, it was, oh, genetics. And, and but how is this genetics? Why it's increasing with time? And when things yeah. are fast, it means there's a lifestyle related to it. Yeah. And, and so gut health might be behind a lot of um, some chronic conditions. We're seeing some hypoallergenic status, et cetera. Um, there are folks with health conditions like ulcerative colitis and, and Crohn's that actually fasting in, in, in certain books. And we are studying the fast mimicking technology for, for those as well. So 
the impact of fasting and that health obviously is 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 multi-dimensional in a lot of companies are studying different aspects of uh, of that impact obviously a change in the microbiome uh, uh potentially giving a rest to the to the gi tract system to heal from the leaky gut and and potentially we'll see the impact on some of the chronic gut conditions like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. that's still to need to be determined we're actually in 212 one at stanford on the fasting mimicking technology on, on ulcerative colitis and one with the university of miami on Crohn's. Nice. That is so awesome. I had a brother-in-law with Crohn's and it's, it's a brutal experience for people. It impacts your life so much. So I love hearing that. And I'm curious, um, uh, you know, I remember in, you know, 2016, 2017, when autophagy was just the coolest word and it was everywhere. And, you know, if basically what would be your definition of autophagy? If someone is a cellular cleanup renewal, (laughs) eating off your old dead cells and creating new ones. Well, um, there's a fine line between autophagy, which is an intracellular. So it's just like you said, the cleanup yeah. the inside of the cell. So it's a cell, yeah. in its own self. When you say killing old cells and getting new ones, that's regeneration. That's not autophagy. And there's a big mm. mix in the, in, mm. the, in, in the use of these terms. So, so producing new cells is a full regenerative process. Yeah. Fixing a cell is a rejuvenative process. So what's the timing difference on fasting between autophagy and regeneration? So in mice, what we've seen, and this is why we go several days, we've seen in mice that they, the first, the first period, there's fat, there's fat reserve, and, and you break down fat into ketones and you're okay. Then the stress is longer and higher. Then you go into rejuvenation, meaning autophagy within the cell. Then if you go longer in, 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 let's go back to the CEO example, right? If you'll stay long without the money, you're going to have to fire some people. And, and yeah. this is what the body does with the regeneration. There are some cells that are old that probably are not producing the right work out of what they consume. And the body says, you, I, have to, I have to kill you. I have to send you to yeah. those. And push the younger cells are more vibrant. They know what to do better with calories. They, they're, they're high performance. So the body as a survival pushes those. This is what we've seen in, in, uh, in mice. Um, yeah. and, and it was described uh, uh, with, uh, with fasting and, and fasting mimicking mice, yeah. I'm assuming it's got to be bio-individual on like when you yeah. hit these levels, depending on where you're starting. You know, if you have somebody that's already maybe yeah. doing a ketogenic diet and they're kind of already there, they may get to these places a lot quicker than someone who's been yeah. eating Snickers and candy and soda all day and jumps in. Right. And so yeah. is there like a general time range that yeah. you guys have found? Um, we, we definitely, what you're saying is true. You know, uh, it's 300 pounder that has an extra, you know, a lot of fat, a lot of reserves in the bank. Yeah. That, or it has a slow metabolism you right. know, it's not get into crisis right away. Right. Versus a skinny person who loves to exercise and has little <laughs> fat and it just suddenly goes into fasting. Yeah. We haven't gone and studied like the variation between each okay. one in like thousands of people to get every variation. Yeah. We know, and, and, and what you're saying is relevant versus would you go into autophagy on 16th hour, 18th hour, 20th hour, or a day and a half. So that we haven't, and again, intermittent fasting is great for that weight balance. We have specialized more, and by the way, we have the fast bar. I don't know if you've seen that for to help you eat and, and ketosis for in the morning. The and fast bod, is that what you said? Bar. It, it's bar. A, oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And so that, that can help you nourish because we believe the same question you asked about dry fast and water fast. And we believe that once we discover the way to help you do a nourish fast, why you want to do a starvation fast. And, uh, and so we have launched that fast bar to even when you cross on number 12, you still want to continue towards 16 and 18. Every long term intermittent fasters needs to hear this. It's, it's probably not the best news, but that's the, that's the true news. And, and we always say the truth here with science. You know, you want to starve. When you do intermittent fasting, you're starving your fat and you're losing the weight and you're happy. You're reducing pressure on the cells as well to rejuvenate. The, the, the point is, like you said, if some people need a full day or more to get into autophagy, if they're doing 16 or 18 hours, they're just stressing their heart, their brain, the essential organs. They're stressing every organ and not getting the benefit if they, if they don't get, right. get all the way there. 
So we believe that, and, and we have launched a product called the Fast Bar that you can eat in the morning just to just to nourish these organs while keeping the stress of fasting on the cell. That's uh, smart. And, and yeah, but the point was you were asking about the differential between this is why when we go to five days of fast with the with the fasting we making diet. Yes, there are some variations, but it's long enough that everyone gets the or, or most people gets the benefit. So we studied people between age 20 and 70. We studied male and female and, and obese and overweight and healthy weight and all of that. And you get the benefits. Like you said, some people will get deeper and faster into fasting. Some people will get delayed. But because it's a five day, everyone's yeah. <laughs> right. And they four, yeah. Yeah, that is that is so cool. Um, wasn't. I hope I'm not wrong here. Wasn't um, this on Goop Lab with Gwyneth Paltrow? Wasn't she doing the yeah, Prolon? Well, Gwyneth is one of the uh, very <laughs> after actually at Prolon. You know, we come we come from LA and the Hollywood scene. I, I mean, half of probably the Hollywood is yeah. the, the, the Prolon. And and the and the cool thing is started with their physicians. So the first year when we mm-hmm. launched Prolon, we didn't have any e-commerce or any digital gateway we just launched it with the doctors it was for us it was like such a great rejuvenative process that it should yeah. be by functional medicine and a lot of the doctors in in LA was rec- were recommending the, the product for uh, for celebs among them was Gwyneth Patro and and I think in her Netflix documentary Goop Lab she did Prolon and she did the aging test before and after and yeah and it did better than the Mediterranean diet and the other diets which now we have full randomized clinical trials on uh, uh, show awesome. whereas in between prolon and, and the training diet. Yeah, that is so awesome. Yeah. I, I definitely have noticed, you know, my clients from LA or New York, they've <laughs> almost all done <laughs> prolon or Dallas, yeah. LA, New York, uh, Chicago, Miami. These are very big Boston, obviously, and, and Seattle and San Francisco. These are very big, uh, prolon, uh, if you yeah. want. we're getting close to the, our million box sold. Uh, we're getting pretty close to that. That is, congratulations! That's so awesome. I'm I'm thinking about you know I actually just a um, couple interviews before you interviewed a girl who is at Johns Hopkins right now studying public health reform, and her mom is a um, natural you know natural health coach has a health coaching certification. She's been raised in this like how can we help you know and um, it's just it's really cool to see like your path coming from, you know, Western medicine to like, man, we got to change some stuff to opening a biotech company to like finally getting here. And I love, I, I I just have to say like, from a a business perspective, I guess I love the intervention here of like, people are so used to getting something from their doctor that they take to help with their thing. And so I just think it's so smart and it's so cool to see your path of like, it's like, yeah, you did it. (laughs) I just have to say that's so awesome to see that because it's you're right. It's like eat healthy exercise. Like it does nothing almost. Like people they they don't have anything to latch on to. Yeah. So I think it's so cool that you guys have created something that people can like, it's like here, take this box and do it. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think I think this is what I mean, we all know that lifestyle medicine, you know, nutrition exercise, stress, sleep, and, and giving and receiving love, these are big determinants of our health. They're the five pillars of longevity. Um, the issue is that that entire market was driven by, hey, let me write a book about this. Hey, let me, and, and it was never right. the science of pharma level. Pharma wins with the health system because they say, look, I have evidence-based medicine, right? I do right. random clinical trials. I play right, I go to the FDA and I do my phase one, phase two, phase three. There was never or almost never a Nutritech company. They call us actually the first Nutritech. Biotech is mm. a Nutritech for nutrition. Nice. There was never a Nutritech that was, you know, passionate, ethical and scientifically driven all and wait and willing to wait for 20 years before wow. they say, here's a product. And I think this is what we've done. If you look at the leadership of our company, it's, it's you know, Harvard docs, Stanford docs, and, and they all left mainstream. Our chief medical officer was the vice president of uh, diabetes at Harvard. And they all left the clinics like I did to come and say, hey, let me change at the mass level. But for us to move, we needed to believe in the credibility. We needed to believe in the science. And now actually we're having very exciting discussions with payers, with insurance about, hey, should we reimburse this thing? Should it be part of really medicine? And, and it opens the door because for the first time they're seeing a product, five days, it's clear. We know what to invest behind. 
and they're seeing a clear benefits in randomized clinical trials. And, and this is what gets things very exciting from lifestyle medicine breaching into mainstream medicine and becoming part of medicine. Wow. I just, I just want to like clap and cheer and like jump on my chair. Cause it's, there's so many of us in the health field who want this and you guys have created that and you're right. Like it's so it's tough. Cause it's like, here's my study on vegetables or exercise. Like, it's just not there, not at that level to be able to like compete with all of the big pharma companies. So it's just, it's incredible. And that's, that's amazing to hear the team of freaking super highly educated superheroes in the health world coming together to create a solution for people. And it's, it's just so smart because fasting is like, it's easy for people to latch onto. They get it right. It's like not, it's not overly complicated. They don't have to track anything or like, you know, get a journal. Like, it's just like here, do this. And it's going to have a super huge impact on your health. So I just have to say thank you and bravo for what you guys have created and, and, and bringing it to the world at that level is, is really cool. Um, I, I guess last, I just, some people may not know, can you explain like what, what is included in this, you know, like Prolon box that people would get? Yeah. So, so if you go on, on the Prolon site, prolonfast.com and, and you order the box, you're going to receive a beautiful big box. You open it, there's five smaller boxes in it. Each one represents the food of the day. So if you're traveling, you go to work, you just grab the box for the day. And basically every box has your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast is in a bar. We have a bar in the morning that, that mimics the fast. We, we, we have a retail product of it we call the fast bar. And then lunch is a soup and crackers and you have drinks and supplements for the day as well. And then dinner is a soup as well. And um, uh, and the pills and, and the drink and your tea. So you have everything you need from a food and drink and supplement perspective in every day. You don't need to buy anything else. You don't need to go anywhere else or cook anything. Yeah. Uh, people love that actually just for yeah. the, hey, I have my food for five days. I don't need to yep. worry. Anything else. And, um, and many people actually ask us, how come it mimics fasting? It has certain carbs, it has some proteins, it has this and that. And, and I know from a, ketogenic perspective where carbs are, are you know, the worst and you want to go a little bit more on, 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 on protein and, and, um, and fat, the fasting mimicking diet actually is higher a little bit on carbs. And, and this is a big, we as scientists need to do a better job telling, telling the story to, you know, let, let's not forget that our body works on carbs, like humanity lives on carbs or whatever, not on animal fat or high fat or high, you know, so, so carb is bad when you have diabetes and high carb, right? And this is, if yeah. you, the ketogenic theories came from actually diabetes care and neuro, and neuro and neurological yeah. care. It's, the brain is a fat organ as well. The brain loves ketones because it's fat feeding fat. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and if you have diabetes, you definitely want to be super low carb. And so the fasting mimicking diet has a lower, little bit lower protein than the keto and has a little bit higher carb. Because again, going back to, you want to, and, and, and all, we have very low glycemic index. So I'm not saying you're going to have a spike in anything. Otherwise you wouldn't fast. But we believe in the balanced way of nourishing the body. We don't believe you should over starve for a long period. Again, mm -hmm. going back to that CEO example, if you give him $0, he's not going to even pay the salaries of, of, the, of the folks. He's not going to even order the products for next month. He cannot do any marketing. The, the company will go bankrupt. So the same way we apply it to, and we studied, you know, very, very low carb, a little bit higher carb, a little bit higher carb, until we find that line where the body is finally getting minimal nourishment to operate. It's not spiking. There's no high carb in the blood. It's very low glycemic index. I see. It's not fasting by starvation, and it's not over delivering carbs or protein to the body. And, and, and you know, there's, there's tens of millions of dollars that went over, like, over a decade or two just into finding these things. And that's important wow. because, you know, every day you hear a theater around carbs and protein and this, it's important. We're playing with lives of people. Food, even yeah. though we say food is medicine and we say it's important, it's literally our life is mainly driven by lifestyle and nutrition is at the core of it. It's the only product we put in our body every day, three to four to five times a day, every day. If you think about it, the day you're born, to the day we die, there's only one thing we put in our body besides oxygen or air or water is food every day, multiple times a day. So it dictates a lot of our epigenetic 
reading in our DNA a lot of our microbiome, our weight, our growth, our aging, and and we gotta respect that when when um, when we study the the number of calories and the number of macros. I think this is where we should put a lot of money into uncovering the truth because we cannot leave it to theories and, and right. Just want to get a book out and, and publish and and sometimes take us in a complete opposite direction. Right. Oh, I totally agree. And also thank you so much for explaining that. Cause I have always wondered, I was like, wow, why are there crackers and carbs? Like, would that make it? I, I was, I was wondering if it wouldn't, you know, quote unquote, kick you out of ketosis as a keto specialist. Right. And make it yeah, make well, you very hungry. It's but it's so the ketosis that you get with prolon is a much deeper than what you get with the ketogenic. It's a pure fasting mimicking. Yeah. Uh, is in ketogenic, you, you still have higher proteins, right? And, and the ketogenic diet came after the the hype and proteins and the Atkins, right? So so the proteins were there and it had to go super low on carb to induce a mild fasting because see, we think the body responds to fasting or not based on carbs. It's actually carbs and protein. They're both, they're both in, you know, ingredients for the cells, right? Fat is reserved, but, but carbs and proteins are both nourishment for a cell. And if, if in, in ketogenic theory, you know, it wasn't politically correct to drop the proteins. It was too early. A lot of people would say, this is crap. We need the proteins. And, you know, the, the nutritional theories of the 80s and the 90s and early 2000s, protein, protein, protein. So you stayed normal on protein. And in order to induce mild fat or at least some level of fasting, you got to go super low on carbs. This is what the ketogenic construct is on a ketogenic diet is okay, we, 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 the cells are gonna feel the proteins, therefore in order to do a certain level of fasting, we go super low on carbon. This is why you have to do it every day to induce a mild fast. With the fasting we make in diet, you're low on protein, low on carb, not super low. You don't need to go super low. This is why it's healthier in that sense for the cell to be balanced and low, but it's only for five days and induce a very deep fast. And the deep fast gets you into the autophagy and the rejuvenation and all this stress is deeper felt on the cell and but but you only do it for a few days or or max five days yeah yeah i mean that makes a lot of sense i think that the the therapeutic ketogenic diet is actually quite low in protein but the more popular yes. uh diet you know do i'm doing a diet keto diet is is generally higher and it makes oh go ahead no, no, sorry. The, the, it, it was animal protein, then it went to plant-based protein, then it went to protein, which is getting close to the fasting. We became, they're, they're actually seeing the science that we, we put out and getting as close as, as, what, as what we have. I, and we fully agree. On, and if you want to get into deep ketosis, it has to be plant-based. And, and we know why. I don't know if everyone knows why, but it, it has to be low on protein. But then you don't do it every day. You're going to go into uh, unless it's for therapeutic reasons, for sure. We I started my discussion clearly saying if you're diabetic, if you have neurological issues, you got to go and fix those on a short term with a ketogenic or or similar diet. Now, if you're healthy, you know uh, I'm looking at you. You look like you're your your normal weight. You're healthy. You're you know you don't have to follow what a patient follows. You got to follow what mm. health span and longevity would tell you to follow. Right. And if you're going to go on a very low protein, plant-based, very, very low carb diet every day, there's no longevity diet showing that that's beneficial. Yeah, no, I, I, I wouldn't recommend that <laughs> either, but I, I, um, I, and it makes sense also, I mean, you're eating so few calories and that you're eating low glycemic, it's not going to have that much of an impact. And I definitely appreciate the supporting of the organs, right? There are some parts of our body that need carbohydrates, you know, they can turn protein into it if they have to, but it's like more stressing on the body. So I think that's smart. It's basically what I'm hearing from you is supportive fasting. It's like supportive of like the basic needs that your body has. So it's not just like freaking out and falling apart so that your organs can run well, while you still get these cellular benefits from fasting. And we're talking now like general ideas. I don't want somebody to, to, because we believe also in life cycle precision nutrition, right? So I would agree with you. If somebody is a little bit overweight, it's a male age, you know, 50, I would say, yes. If you tell me it's a female thin postmenopotic with osteoporosis, I don't want her to be close to that fasting because now yeah. immunity for her, bone density for her is important, right? If right. you're a young person, I'm afraid of diabetes and cancer. I have them in the family. I'm overweight and I'm age 60. 
I will give you a prescription on, on what to eat. But then if you tell me I'm 75 and now you don't absorb well meat and you don't absorb well the protein and then your muscle becomes an organ of longevity because movement is so important at the age, I'll give you a different level of protein. So what we're saying here is a very high level theme, but actually lifespan is cycles, you know, between zero and 18, where you still need to grow physically even, then different between the, the age of 19 till you're 40, yeah. where it's, it's a different priority and different profile right. of condition versus pre-disease 40 to 60, which is critical here where to eat between age 40 and 60 and 70, or after 65 and 70, where food is so important now for your mobility and your muscle and your bone, then it's a different profile. So yeah, yeah. probably this is for a different podcast, but yeah, I don't Yeah, I love, I love that. I, 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 um, it's so funny how we, I guess we always just, we, we want a blanket statement, everything and it's like, this is the best for all humans. And it's like, wait, look at those two humans. So like how, what, you know, but in, in a nutshell, I would say, you know, um, fasting has really, really changed my life. And I used to fast for religious purposes, but I was more unhealthy and it was super hard. Like I, it was the first Sunday of every month and I would just dread it. Like I could literally Friday just start feeling anxiety before this day came. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's going to suck so bad. And now that I've, you know, two, two ketos credit, it really did help me get into the a space where that became easier. And I, I will share for anybody who's thinking they're like hearing five days, like I'm not doing that. It's, it gets easier and actually going in the hole and like really doing it. It makes those future fasts like so much more easy. And I love food. I love to eat. I have a big appetite. I have a fast metabolism. Like I, like the thought of that used to scare me, but I, it, if I'm saying, if I can do it, you can do it because I used to not be able to go, you know, more than two hours without eating and you can create those adaptations in your body and it gets easier over time. You no, know, it's, it's like going to the gym for the first time you feel the aches, but then it gives you the elasticity. You go the second time, the third time, you find it much easier. And then you want to go more and more because you're happy with it. And it, it elevates your feeling of self-achievement and, and your body responds very well to it. So I yeah. Can- Man, I'm going to have to get um, Dr. Longo's book now because I'm so curious yeah. on like the hormone impacts and the timing and the, like what all the science is behind all of those decisions. You know, it's so and exciting that it's so research based. Yeah, it's called the Longevity Diet. It was published in 2018. So a lot of also what he talks about in, in even preclinical trials now we have the results in humans, but it's a great foundation to fasting and food, by the way, meaning what to eat even between the fasts. And, and it's called the longevity diet. It was, I think, an Amazon bestseller for 2018. And, and then he was nominated by uh, Time Magazine as among the top 50 most influential people in health. Yeah. For work. That's yeah. not surprising. <laughs> that, is, that is so awesome. That, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, what would, where would you have people go from here if they're interested in trying fasting mimicking? Well, if you, if they want to do it to extend every day's fat, like if, if you're an intermittent faster, you like to go all the way to 16, 18 hours, my recommendation, do it with a fast bar. This is what I do every morning mm. uh, or, or almost every morning. I, I, I'm busy at work. I, I stay with no food for late, but I do the fast bar because again, you want to fast your fat. You don't want to fast your heart that needs to pump every, every second. You don't want to fast your kidneys that have to filter, you know, so yeah. do the with nourishment if you want to go to 16 or 18 hours but i definitely recommend you do 12 to 14 hours naturally we got to adopt that in our lifestyle we're not yeah. built to eat all the time we're built to rest at least for a good 12 hours after we yeah eat. and then if you want to do a longer fast two to three times a year the, the prolong is the five day fasting we're making diet we talked about and why to do that longer fast is again to put pressure on the cells to rejuvenate and, and that's the best benefit out of it um, so you can go to Prolon website and it's prolonfast.com or the fast bar for intermittent fasting. Okay. Thank you so much. And that's P R O L O N you guys, if you're yeah. wondering, thank you so much. They, uh, first of all, thank you for your career and all of the like massive steps you've taken in your life to be able to come to this point. Thank you for taking that journey and thank you for coming and sharing all of it with us today. It's been awesome to be able to hear from you firsthand. Thank you, Zara. And, uh, helped a few people here today to to improve their health span and longevity. Thanks. Thanks, thanks.